Welcome to the Absolute Comics Show right here at the Comic Story and Podcast Network, hosted at 5 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday at about twitch.tv slash comic story. I forgot where I was going to get that phrasing for a moment. <laughs> you started with the My time. name is Benny. I run a YouTube channel known as Comic Story, and we talk about comic books on a regular basis. Sal over there reviews and discusses comic books with his buddies over at the Comic Pop channel, and he was smart enough to put his branding on his microphone. <laughs> it was free real estate. I was looking at it for, for weeks. I'm like, oh my God, slap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every week we get together and talk about the greatest and latest comic book news and what we loved and hated about three jokers is the topic of the day but today we're going to be talking about batman 100 and why i think it's boring I mean, then we're going to talk about extra swords and why i think it's boring <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about three jokers and why i think it's a disappointment and then we're going to talk about Batman Warzone gave an upgrade to Poison Ivy oh i didn't read that oh we'll see what that says it was fun and then we're going to talk about marvel stormbreakers and you're getting at uh, not you're not Natalie, you're Sal. Sal's opinions on all this stuff <laughs> <laughs> should be fun. Anyway, welcome to Absolute Comics, a show we do every week. <laughs> Ooh, that was a great theme. I like that. We're gonna have to do that. Someone have to auto tune that, and that'll be our theme. So yeah, uh, where do you want to start? Batman 100 or Ten of Swords? Let's start, yeah, let's let's start with Batman Ten of Swords. Oh, okay, so let's do Batman. Well, it's the biggest topic on here. Um, events that happened. He brought back Oracle. But I think it's a bullshit return because yep. she's not actually back. She's still Batgirl. Right. So it's more of a it's more of a nod to Oracle. Yeah, than more anything. like Batgirl used a laptop. <laughs> and put on glasses. Ooh! <laughs> Cloud Hunter's identity has been revealed. Okay, let's talk about that for two seconds. Please. What the hell was even the point of the Clown Hunter? Uh action figures. Like he didn't do anything. He showed up, killed a few clowns. Batman's like, I'll turn you into another one of my, my kids that I trained to go kill people. Yep. And that's it. Like, that's, that's it. it. Did, did, he do, did something happen in Warzone? I didn't read Warzones. N- he's in it. Uh, the community likes him. That was the Warzone story. Okay. Like, Clown Hunter is the Narrows hero. Um, Punchline is getting her own series, oh. which I'm not actually that shocked about with how well received she was. Can, can I just ask you a question, Sal? Please. Why do people like Punchline? I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I well, they like Punchline because they liked Harley Quinn, and I don't think Punchline is like a direct Harley Quinn ripoff. I mean, you can make the parallels just by virtue of it's a girl who was manipulated by the Joker into becoming a henchwoman who's clown themed. So I mean, like the obvious, very surface level parallels are there. But I think people like Punchline because number one, DC really pushed her and insisted upon her, and number two, she's a she's got a smart design that Jorge Jimenez makes look really great. And uh, she, if, if you want to go a little bit deeper than, than than surface level, she represents a kind of like new millennial supervillain, and I think that's kind of that is just by virtue of like the the the, the analysis and the discussion, kind of interesting. Do I want to okay. read that? No. Do I want to read a series of that? No, I Do thought I, she was an interesting idea as a replacement for Harley at first, right? But I felt by like midway through Joker War, her she had run her course, like, well, and, and I think she that has she, I, she didn't do anything. Nope, she was ineffective at what she was doing, yep. which was organizing his money. Right. She lost to Harley, lost to Nightwing, lost to jo- like Joker, lost to everyone. Yep, like she was she was beaten by Batman off panel. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, she was done. She, her purpose was played out. She was the new Harley Quinn to mess with Harley Quinn, in my opinion. Yep. And it did his job, and that was that. hmm Yeah. I think that she is... The reason why she doesn't necessarily work, or the reason why she wasn't as well-received as maybe she could have been, it has more to do with the failings of the Joker War than it does with the failings of Punchline as a character. I think if Punchline were introduced... As like a prelude to Joker War, where instead of Joker War happening, we introduce Punchline, and Punchline is like the villain for an arc. Or we reveal she's like the mastermind of some kind of arc that has nothing to do with like the Joker War. Because the Joker War itself was, for me, having wrapped it all up, a fantastic letdown. And 100%. The pro- look, they, they go to that, because you're right. Punch Everything that came out of the Joker War, it's... It is the epitome of the problem with comics. Yes. That is the issue I have with Joker War. I loved the art. I loved the writing. 
I thought James Tinian had amazing ideas. It did amazing jobs with them. Yep. But at the end of his 12 issue, 13 issue run, it had to go back to the status quo. And that is the epitome, the problem with comic books. Tinian couldn't do anything fantastic or crazy because by issue 100, Batman had to be back with the Bat family, have a majority of his money, and the villains had to be back to where they had to be. I think it was actually, it's it's worse because it's it's it represents everything that you come to know about comics today. Because the thing with, with, with Batman and with mainstream comics, and particularly with superhero, serialized, ongoing, in-continuity comic books, is, yeah, after like a couple of arcs, things kind of have to go back to the way they were. Didn't used to be the case all the time. And in fact, like with a lot of other characters they they kind of have like a sliding time scale where that stuff just kind of keeps like going, you know, like things will change and eventually we might return to the status quo, but things will still have happened and changed. It won't feel necessarily like we just did a hard reset every time a new writer or a new arc starts up. But in right. today's world, it's not enough that we got to go back to the way things were, but we also are introducing characters because it is more lucrative for the creator of that arc to create new characters, even if they don't necessarily fit or work or have relevancy towards the story at hand, because if those characters are adapted into a show or a movie or an action figure line... It's the Bendis effect. It's the Bendis effect. It's just, I got him. Yes, I know James Rhodes has a niece who's super smart, but what about Riri Williams, though? I don't own that character over there, but I own this character over here. And it's like, if I own the character over here and they make a cartoon, I get a check forever. And I get it. Listen, Inside Baseball, everybody, writing comics pays little. And well, I mean, the uh, I think that's the problem punchline, right? James Tanya is like, I could do another Joker arc, I could use Joker's daughter, I could use existing characters. Yep, how about I create a but like, why do you think Clown Hunter and Punchline got made and really didn't do much? Designer, now Punchline, been- Clown Hunter, uh, and yeah. then the last one, there's four characters uh, that Tynan invents in <laughs> this arc who well, don't yeah, the do anything so that if they ever get used. Yeah, right. Like well, what if what is his name? The ghost maker, the, the ghost maker. That, like, yeah. Mentos, the ghost maker. Like there are <laughs> there are four characters, at least that James Tynan in the fourth creates for Joker War, a story that is supposedly a true to form back to basics grassroots Batman versus Joker story. And and they do nothing. They contribute nothing. All, you know, if it, and and don't even get me started when people are like, "Oh, you got to read this tie-in or that tie-in." Because part of the reason why I hate tie-ins is because there is a Batgirl tie-in to Joker War, where she gets reparalyzed and nobody else does it because that writer was not invited to the summit meeting or something. Like, give me a break. Okay, that, that, the Nightwing tie-in is amazing. Even the Red Hood tie-in is amazing. Right. Though it goes nowhere. It has to they go nowhere. They, it can't go. They make the they make Red Hood think that they killed Joker's daughter. And they're literally driving away. And he's like, well, I got to go find Nightwing. Because Nightwing's a bad guy right now. And he runs off. And they're like, but Joker's daughter's not dead. <laughs> and you're like, that's it? That's, that's, that's the Red Hood tie-in? Right. That's the whole tie-in. Like, the jo- the bad girl one, she gets re-paralyzed. And then they, they bas- you're right. He wasn't invited to the summit. And they jump ahead. Yep. Like, okay, that's like a month later, everything's resolved. Another bat girl? What wait, wait. You were paralyzed a month ago. Like you were paralyzed during the Joker War, and then just in this arc, she's just like, I'm okay, but let's get back to basics. I'm gonna put on my glasses and sit in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, please. <laughs> you're doing them by the you're amazing. No. It like the only tie-in that mattered, it did a really good job was the Nightwing one. Right, because he, he, he even references. It, yeah, it, it, well, it's, it's almost like they were like tied in. Okay, I almost feel bad for tied in with the way he had to do it, because because I, I guess he's staying on the book now. Yeah. but he wasn't at the time this went down. Nope, it was tied in. You have fourteen issues to make people like Batman again. Yep, fix Nightwing, get the Bat Family back together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, the whole damn thing was supposed to be crescendoing into five G and into the Luke Fox Batman story. Right. And so I feel like, and we don't Batman know, and I'm sure. Do hmm? you think Batman was supposed to lose? That I, was going to be. I don't know, but I know you can feel the changes in this. You could feel like where things, because 
it is so unremarkably mundane. Like, there are so many big things that happen in this story that go nowhere and affect no one, despite it being massive. Joker straight up knowing Batman's identity and exploiting it to the nth degree and making Batman sad, but Batman's too hopped up on drugs to really have an emotionally satisfying reaction to any of it. The The theater story goes no nowhere. Like there is the, out, the Alfred dead body zombie thing turns into nothing. It goes, it, it's, it's absolutely nothing. And then if you read the Joker war tie in book that just came out last week, where it's like an anthology that introduces like Queen Ivy and whatnot. There's just an issue where it's like James Tynan's yelling at Tom King, like where he goes, I had a big thing with Alfred in this story and you had to kill him in your arc. So I had to make him into a stupid broken neck zombie. So thanks for that. Like it's just yoke. It's just Joker yelling at Bane by proxy. Like it's, and by the way, I love the idea of Joker resenting and having a problem with Bane. And I've been waiting for that kind of confrontation. And on one hand, if you shut off your like meta brain and you just look at it as a superficial conversation between Joker and Bane, it's kind of fun. But if you think about it in terms of like, I think Tynan's mad that King put him in this weird, awkward position. Like, I, I feel like, because I love Tynan as a writer. Yes. I, lo- I love the ideas that he presented. Yes. I feel like DC and WB had too much, had too much say in what happened to war, uh, yeah. Joker War. I feel like there was such a backlash to the Tom King run. And yes. bear in mind, I, guys, I like the Tom King run, but there was such a backlash and a desire to bring Batman back to normal. Yes. That Titan was just stuck with, I got to do something epic that involves the Joker, but I can't make it affect anything yep. long term. Yep. So I'm just going to introduce a bunch of characters. Like, <laughs> yeah. And like, it's so, it was so frustrating because the story like by virtue of his existence couldn't affect any significant or noticeable change in the status quo. And yet, 99 and 100 just feel like they were complete rewrites or whatever the plan was. Cause up to 98 was like, Holy fuck. What is happening? Yes. And then we get to 99 and it's like, Batman's better. Okay. <laughs> Joker's got, Joker's got a bad suit. And then 100 is like, Batman broke it. Yeah. Okay. He, he like, takes <laughs> it off. Like, but, uh, I you if you can't affect change and you can't make the status quo uh altered and you got to go back to basics don't have your characters directly address the thing you can't do like when Batman goes in to fight Joker and Harley shows up and she's like this has really never happened before where I am backing you up and also I'm going to kill the Joker. And Batman's like, nope. And she's like, if you start to lose, I'm totally killing the Joker. This story has to end differently. And then it doesn't. And it doesn't like the animated series doesn't. Like where he just, I mean, the only thing that's satisfying is that scene is the, is the interaction between Batman and Joker at the very end of their conversation. But like, we don't get any true resolution and we only get like, it's the, it's the narrative equivalent of, and then Joker falls into a smokestack. And it's like, really? And then you know there's like a backup and- where it's like, nah. Like, <laughs> well, they don't even do that because Batman's like, oh, yeah, no, I found out that he got away. Yeah. Like, you you finally have the moment where Batman leaves the jo- The Joker's like, uh, you're going to save me. You're always going to. Batman's like, nope, nope. You can get out of this. Well, and, and then it's we like, find- oh, Joker. like- <laughs> and it's like, of course he wasn't. Like, you know, your options were he was going to save everybody. You know, be, it was even Batman being really clever or he was going to go save Harley. Those are your options. It was never going to be I'm yeah. saving the Joker and letting Harley die. Like, <laughs> so stupid. It was uh, it's it was very I, disappointing. I, I, I don't you, I don't can, you could feel and I'm hoping that him moving forward, they're going to let him have the reins a little bit more. Because you could see the potential because knowing what he did on Detective, knowing what he's done on Justice League Dark, knowing what Tynan is capable of, you can just feel the handcuffs on him when he's trying to write this story. It feels like it, yeah. But at the same time, I'm like, if you're James Tynan IV with a best-selling independent series that will definitely be a cash cow for you in either a TV series or movie with something's killing the children, 
if you are, I was going to say because that's got the coolest character designs ever in existence. Yes, so they kill the children. Right. Yeah. If you are going to get paid for days, having created some sweet ass action figures in the form of Clown Hunter, Punchline Designer, and Ghost Maker, then you don't need to take the bullshit from editorial anymore. And if you're going to do that, then I don't want to read your Batman. Like, I'm out. Because this was, if, if, if your Batman is going to be more flash with no substance and more characters that have no place to go just because you know that you'll be paid if you create these characters, I have no patience for that. And I'll just wait until another person comes on Batman. Because, like, this was... Nobody asked Why? for a Joker War. You're, ta- you're taking a much harder stance I am because, on this like, than it, I did. Because Joker War could have at least felt like a classic Batman story. But it's well, not it because it comes yeah, it on just, the heels of every other Batman story with the Joker in a time when there's nonstop Joker story. There are no fewer than three yeah. stories with Joker in them right now. Well, the kicker is, too, right before this all went down, we also had a bunch of Joker stories because of the movie. Exactly. There was like five black label books, all different stories of the Joker. And like, they're still coming there's out. So, <laughs> there's so many Joker stories happening right now. Yeah. No, I know. And it's like, you 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 chose now to make a Joker war? Like, and, and Joker's motivation for wanting to do this in the first place is just so unsatisfying. Like there's there's nothing about it that felt personal, despite the fact that it's like one of the one of the like two Joker stories where Joker's like, I know who you are and I'm gonna make it personal. Like, I don't know. It just the there was a lot of really great ideas that I'll bet look awesome nine months ago on a whiteboard that now are res- uh, they're, they're basically reduced to nothing more than a couple of really awesome Jorge him and his art pieces. Like the art was incredible. This whole yeah, arc. I'll say that. That's where we are. Like, it's just, it looks great. It introduced the, the world at large to Jorge Jimenez, despite the fact that he was also drawing justice League and Superman at the time. And if you missed that shame on you, cause those were great, but like, yeah. you know, other than getting, and by the way, Jorge Jimenez is going to stay on Batman for a while. So it's like, and by the way, why wouldn't he? Where the hell is he going to go? So Tinian. I looked it up really like in July. They canceled it, resetting it. It's just Batman 101. It'll be Tinian. Yeah. 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 That makes sense. Yeah. So. So. I, all right. Yeah. Well, let's go to that other Joker story. And I'm going to, I've, the more I've thought about it, the more I hate it even more. <laughs> it's so nonsensical. It's so out of continuity. It so doesn't make sense with the Joker character as established. It is revisiting Batman and Red Hood content that has already been done multiple times. Mm -hmm. Batgirl and Red Hood make no sense as a couple. Well, they're not a couple. They just, they, 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 you know, I don't think they're a couple. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I I know what you're, I know what you're saying. I understand. Three Jokers took so long to come out for this to be what we get. Right. Right. A story where Joker is making more (laughs) Joker. Yes. At the end of the day, I don't want to get too deep into it, but I will say at the end of the day, it turns out that maybe three jokers isn't more, isn't as interesting as it sounded. <laughs> no, 100%. I think that's it. Cause it's, it's just nonsensical. Like, the general idea that a Joker is making more Jokers and that the world's greatest detective didn't even get a clue to that. For 60 something years Mm -hmm. doesn't like, I think that's what boggles my mind about this Mm because they're not establishing that this is something new. The Joker has been doing for five years and that Batman has been fighting all these different Jokers. And no, it's a no, 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 no. Joker's been around since before Batman and he's made (laughs) new Jokers and no one put two and two together. (laughs) Right. No. Yeah. For me, this issue, it's what, what the, the biggest failing, if I want to give it a failing in issue two of three jokers is that it's only a three issue mini series and it's barely about the joker right right but like for me all the questions that were raised over the last what several years, years from yeah. dark side war have only been compounded by the questions that were raised in issue one so i have a whole bunch of questions from issue one who are these jokers where do they come from? What's their plan? Why are they doing it? How come Batman doesn't know? Where does Red Hood factor in all of this? What's the his, what's, what's the secret behind the Axis chemicals uh, like Jokerized toxin? There's a lot of questions that come up. 
In issue two, none of them are answered, but I get more questions. Joker's barely in the second one, too, in comparison to the amount of screen time that they give Red Hood and Batman. Like, well, a, a lot of people, I don't know if you've, you've gotten the same feedback, but a lot of people uh, seem to respond to issue two by saying, oh, Three Jokers is a secret Red Hood story. Like, that the whole series is about Red Hood. Like, the, the, way, the way I would look at it, because I'm a Red Hood fan, and I've been saying this multiple times, I like, I like this story because it is a Red Hood story. My complaint is that it's just diving in deeper to ideas we've already explored yeah. for Red Hood. Now, let me but, ask you this. You're a Red Hood what? fan. I think Jason Todd is best kept in a glass case and in a coffin. But if, uh, <laughs> but, but, but with Red Hood being a character, Joker says in this issue that Jason was, when he was resurrected, he like has this pain and he only gets pleasure when he inflicts pain on other people. Is that actually right. true? What, for Red Hood? Yeah. It's... Has that I mean, actually it, been like established or is that something that no, they, so that they say an in established this? thing? Because like the problem with Red Hood and this is what people don't understand. Red Hood is a problem is Red Hood's problem was popularity. Red Hood as a concept is great, right? Him coming back as the Red Hood in under the Red Hood and being a villain for Batman that Batman sees once in a blue moon. Yeah is good because then he comes back he gets to be robin for a minute turn on batman and we can have an endless loop of an anti-hero that is actually a villain to batman but has a fan base yes the problem with red hood is the popularity that came out of the character yeah and then new 52 deciding to try and make him a good guy again right. but you but red hood is only popular because he's the batman that kills but if you bring him back into the bat family he can't be the batman that kills right so he's in a constant loop of being the ostracized black sheep of the family who won't do it until he does it again. He has the Damien problem. Yeah. Where Damien's popular because he's the son of Batman. Right. Damien is popular because he's willing to kill, but Batman holds him back. But Damien has to constantly learn the lesson that he shouldn't kill and should be Batman and should trust his friends. Yeah. Only to immediately in the new Robin slash Teen Titans series... Trust no one, want to kill all the villains and just a little shit again. Right. And Red Hood is in that same situation where he'll show up. He's the little shit that wants to kill everyone. Yeah. Batman or the teammates force him not to do it. Then he eventually becomes like, oh, I'm a good guy, but I'm still shooting people. You yeah. know, like, yeah, this the, is <clears throat> the biggest, the biggest one, the most obvious of those. That was the biggest thing. And I think Scott Liddell that actually did as much hate as he gets for his writing. This is one of the best things he ever did was when he finally made Red Hood a good guy at the end of Red Hood and the Outlaws in the New 52. Yeah. He then had Red Hood and Arsenal going on a cross-country trip where they tried to be good guys. Yes. And when he reverted Red Hood back to being a villain, he made the terms of which Red Hood was willing to kill someone so high. <laughs> the stake was so high that it made sense because he discovered that the Penguin had uh, blackmailed the his father, got him killed, and put him in a maximum security prison and forced Jason Todd to not trust his dad for 10 years. Right. That was the line that made him go kill again. Mm -hmm. But anybody else who does Red Hood stuff yeah. doesn't know the development of the character and how right. he's gone through this, this arc of yes. like 100 issues. Yes. They're all just like, no, no, no. Red Hood's the Batman with guns. Yeah. Like <laughs> well, because I, I'm convinced that Jeff Johns didn't read any Red Hood material. But he's like, I want to... The fact that he shot Joker makes... Like, the amount of time... Even in Under the Red Hood, he doesn't shoot Joker. Nope. <laughs> nope. Well, and... And what Joker says... This is all spoilers for the first issue, by the way. is just... What Joker says to Jason, for me, doesn't jive continuity-wise, but... It seems to bother Jason so much that he does kill. And we don't really see too many interactions between Joker and Jason, ironically, despite his their, his origins. Um, but I, I, I thought it was pretty well earned, but it was like a little odd. It, it, it didn't. Again, there's something about this book, and I don't know if it's because it's not done, like because it's not finished yet. But there's something about it that just like it doesn't feel as epic as they want it to be. You know, like the art is unfathomably good. There is like, there is nothing negative I can say about the art is that, is, except for that maybe it might be too good for this book. Cause like the book itself, I, like, okay. So either 
it is a mystery that is going to like make perfect sense once issue three drops or it's going to be a bad mystery in which they withheld information so that they look clever by the time the third issue comes out and that's where we are so i really i don't know if this actually is great because i don't really know what the hell this book is even about right now you know what i mean like I, I don't know what they're trying to say, and they haven't answered any of my questions as a Red Hood yet. Story, even as a Red Hood story, this doesn't make any sense continuity. No. Oh, someone, no, 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 our, no. someone in our chat just said, I wonder how they're going to handle the Gotham Knights game because Red Hood's the one that kills. Red Hood doesn't kill anymore. That's the thing. And he hasn't in like five to six years. Right. Of all the developments he has acquired over the years, the amount of times he lives back to being against Batman, he doesn't kill anymore. Yeah. He's always willing to, right. but he never does. Mm -hmm. The fact that he killed the Joker, he's run into the Joker multiple times. Mm. So this isn't an out of continuity. Like they're like, oh, maybe it's in continuity. If it's if it it doesn't make sense because it it's not on the heels of Under the Red Hood. Right. You know what I mean? It's not like, oh, uh, Batman, you were supposed to kill the Joker, but you didn't, so now I will. Right. It doesn't, like, where it fits in doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Does it, is this right after Under the Red Hood? Is this way after Under the Red Hood? Is this, Red Hood's a good guy? Is he a bad guy? What is the situation? And it's almost like Jeff Johns liked the idea of Under the Red Hood, but didn't like how it resolved. Yes. So he wanted to do his own version of that, <laughs> but he couldn't. Right, right, right. Well, I, I he's going to ignore everything that has happened to the character in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But well, he's absolutely <laughs> doing I think he's absolutely ignoring everything about what happened to Red Hood. Like he does not. He, like if you ask Jeff Johns what the connection is between Bizarro and Jason Todd, he'd be like, what connection? Like <laughs> he would just be like, what oh. do you mean? He's dating Artemis kind of not yeah, really. He'd be like, <laughs> really? No, I'm not going to reference that in my story. Uh, and. I, there's something there's something valuable and interesting about this issue in which we see two people who were broken by the Joker and how they dealt with their trauma and how they help each other and how like when Jason kills the Joker Barbara is so shaken by it that you see throughout the issue the evolution of her anger and how what she's saying and doing is all deflection so because she wants to kill the Joker. Like, because she's like, no, you see, what you wound up, like, when you were broken, killed, and resurrected, you came back and just started killing people. When I was broken, I grew and developed and became something else and then worked through it and like and that's evidenced by like her wheelchair and like all the self-help books like she's like i did all this work and you showed up and just started killing folk and like yeah we we both dealt with our respective trauma in very different ways and yet you just get to kill the joker and i maybe kind of secretly want to and seeing you do it made me like feel nuts like it made me like hurt and it brought yeah. up all these other things and so like seeing that like exploration is really kind of fascinating i and and i was like it actually would be fascinating if they're like we're gonna do a friggin epic joker story set today because in today's world joker is responsible for the killing of jason todd and the and the the paralysis of barbara gordon they're both alive and also very active characters so seeing them you know i seeing all that happen and still have them be active that's like that, that has the potential for rich story but is it like is this the best story I we can get like out of it and i don't know i I feel like the problem with this is, and I want to preface this by stating I love Jeff John's writing. I'm yeah. one of the biggest advocates for his Green Lantern run. I loved what he did with Wally West. I'm a huge fan. But I almost feel like the reason this took four years to come out is he said, we're going to do three Jokers. Right. But I don't want to do, I want three Jokers to be a swan song discussing the trauma that Joker has inflicted on these three individuals and their lives and how they can get, uh, uh, get over the trauma and move on like that. And DC went just do a story about three jokers right and i feel like part of the reason it took so long to come out is he went in this very artistic direction with it a very much like a psychological d d deep dive into trauma yeah, and how you can a, get over trauma yeah, this is not it's an a event book, it's a book about overcoming trauma of the different levels and how different people can deal with trauma 
It's not a three Joker story. And I think that's the problem that I have with yeah. it because I don't think it's a bad book. It's just not the three Joker story that we all thought it was going to be. Oh, no. <laughs> and that's, that, I think that you just hit it. That is, I think, the reason why there's so much negative criticism for this book, despite the fact that it's not over, is because it's not what we thought it was going to be. No. And like, because the Joker himself is barely in it. We've gotten almost no explanation. Yeah. Like that whole flashback sequence at the start of this issue. Where he went to his family and the kids. Yeah. Was that a dream? Was it's that him coming back to the house? It's not real. How does that fit into yeah, like how does that fit into anything? Like, what is that? Well, that's the thing. There are clues in the art that may indicate what it is, because like if you take a closer look at like Joe Chill's cell, the woman and child are the same in Do- Joker's daydream as they are in Joe Chill's cell. So, like, is it a flashback? Is that Joe Chill's family? Did Joker kill Joe Chill's family and he's just daydreaming about it again? Is Joe Chill the Joker or is he going to become the Joker? And as such, like, we're going to see him become the comedian? Like, I I don't know. But that's the thing is that all this book did was ask, was, was raise further questions and didn't bother to answer the first bunch of questions. And I don't think one more issue is going to answer them all. And I don't think think it's a problem. It's only a three issue series. Well, and I don't think it's fair if they expect to answer them further or set them up as a story down the road. No, 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 no. You had five years to tell this story. This is the story. Like if you're, you know what I mean? Like Jeff Johns, like you got your half decade to tell the three Joker story here. It is. If you, if I, if you don't finish it in three issues because you wanted elaborate sequences where a raccoon doesn't get hit by a truck. Oh my God. Okay. And I think that's the other part that irritates the piss out of me. Mm -hmm. The flashback sequence, the raccoon sequence, the nine panel spread of nothing. Yeah, I get it. You want to take an artistic approach to this, but you only got 120 pages, Jeff Johns. What are you doing? Right. Like, wh- why are we doing this? Like, it's Watchmen. Like, that was my biggest problem with Doomsday Clock. Yeah. Like, well, Doomsday at Clock, at least, point, you, Jeff, at least huh? it's at least it's a sequel to Watchmen. So it's like I get the illusions and and and, and stylistic affectations of Watchmen. I get that with Joker. That doesn't this is not jo- <laughs> This ain't Watchmen. <laughs> We don't need nine pages of a raccoon. No. And like, I, you know, I, you know, I, this is a little rant. I'm tired of this shit. Yeah. Cause Jeff Johns is doing it. Tom King's now doing it. You're not making fucking movies. Right. It's a goddamn comic book. Yeah. Yeah. Why this am I looking like at a once in a blue moon obscure thing? You shouldn't be showing me an entire goddamn scene as if it's a fucking movie. Yeah. Yeah. This no is not dialogue, a storyboard. No nothing. It's here's this guy's expression changing for nine Freaking panel, Sal. Yeah, this is a raccoon crossing the street for nine panels, Sal. I know, I know, I know. Because these people want to make movies, but they can't, so they're just trying to like spread out their comics, (laughs) like old school '80s style. But we've moved beyond that in the world of comic books. I don't know. I I really like again. You know, I haven't really thought too much about it. Like I, I, you know, if I were, I don't know. If I had the time it's, it's, and the effort, I might be a, like, what is the significance of the raccoon? Why is it? What, what is it almost? That's what I mean. Like, look, it's I. I'm all about comic books are art. I love the artwork of comic books. Yes. OK, and I love the style of the Watchmen and things like that. Yeah. But the style of the Watchmen in which you will do nine panels with very little changes to a face or you'll show a raccoon slowly crawling or we're going to see the reaction to somebody's face if something happens. That doesn't have a place in modern day comics, in my Mm. opinion, when instead of doing nine panels of the same artwork in which you make minor changes so that you can express something, Mm -hmm. you could give me a fucking splash page that looks incredible, tons of work put into it. It looks amazing. You could go with a very stylized artistic approach that doesn't feel copy and pasted over and over and over or waste an entire page to show me a raccoon crossing the street. Yeah. Why did, do you know what the point of that scene was? So that it felt like the opening to a TV show (laughs) in which, you know, Oh, here comes the car. What's in the car. Oh, it's going to hit a raccoon. That was the point of that scene. There was nothing artistic about it. There was nothing at all. It was to stage as if it was a movie scene. Mm. That was the point of that. And you could have easily have done a much better art or much better approach to it or not spread it out. Nine Panels. Yeah. I am the one who will tell you 
I am the one who knocks. I am the one who will tell you <laughs> yep. that art is what makes a comic book an artistic piece, that it's not for children. I am an advocate for artwork being as amazing as it is. But at the same time, we also have to be aware of what media medium we're in. And it's comic books. It's not movies. It's not a TV show. If you want to do a raccoon tr- crossing the street and a truck is driving by, that goes in Jeff John's Stargirl show. That <laughs> goes in his movie approach. But the dude is making movies. Right. So it's not like this is something he wants to do and can't get into. Right. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. But like, I remember the internet kind of like, what was it? Uh, Batman looks at a globe. It zooms in on on Alaska. They like literally show you like towns in Alaska. And then Joker refers to Joe Chill as being chilly. And the internet was like, did you zoom in on Alaska? Because it is a cold place to thematically link that panel with the next page and then talking to Joe Chill. Like, was it literally just they're both cold? Because yeah, well, that's, what I mean. that's the movie approach. That's the setup for a movie. Yeah, well, that is not, comics that do is that no too. Place in a comic. But like, huh? comics do that too all the time. Where it's like, you know, there's literally. I'll go back as far as McFarlane Spider Man had the had the same narrative device, and usually it had characters like because there was the narrative device of like a character say, or the narration saying "rise above it all" and a character being above something else and like so you see that a lot like that the the idea of like someone saying one thing and then the next page them finishing like another character finishing the sentence in a different context it's a good bridging like device i get it but i don't i i hope against hope that it isn't like because if john's literally had batman arbitrarily stare at alaska because it's a cold place so that it could narratively link to joker talking to a person whose name also refers to the temperature that sucks and i won't know until issue three comes out like i don't know you know what i mean like i'll have to really pour over all three issues but issue two didn't it, i think the reason why people are unhappy and the reason why they're feeling like unsatisfied is because it didn't answer any questions it didn't further the plot and i have no idea what's going to happen next and i think that's my biggest problem with a lot of what they're using is not furthering the plot right. it's not no it's not doing anything no i mean like we did, you know what though? But we did get some baller sequences. We got some amazing art out of this issue. There's some great stuff yeah. in there. I don't know about you, be me being not a Red Hood fan, but me, but me recognizing there's nothing we can do about it. Like, okay, he's here, and he's been here for like ten years. There's no going back. The sequence of Joker hitting Red Hood in the head with a crowbar again was like really cool, but also like really sad and haunting. I don't know about you, but I was like, that's kind of awesome that we did it. Cause I don't think they've I done it. I did like again. the callbacks there, but like I said, that's why I also feel like, is this just taking place right after? No, I think we it's, got I think it's now. <laughs> oh, like after everything that already happened. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's after everything. I mean, and for John's, it's like, well, I only read like two red hood stories and one of them was under the red hood. So like, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but I like that the sequence, the, the shot of Barbara, kicking in the door like using her legs in this like really dark powerful scene it's like almost a full page splash awesome stuff uh like, okay but here's an un- unneeded one uh when they're explaining that the clown's been killed yes and they spend a total of seven panels With looking the through the eyes of a fly yeah like on an artistic perspective that is epic it is great on looking. a on a, on a, you only have 60 pages on <laughs> yeah. three issues. Why did we spend one whole what page? What the fuck are you doing? It's a lot of real huh? estate. It's a lot of real estate to dedicate it's to a that. A lot of real estate when I don't, you know, you, you have presented a three jokers philosophy and idea, and you want to explore the Batman, Red Hood, and Batgirl philosophy along with three different jokers and how it all comes together. And you have three books, three, three books to do it in. Yeah. And you spend a page looking through the eyes of a fly. Yeah. No. I get then, the- then we have a page right after that cell. Yeah. In which we are, we get one panel of J- J- uh, Gordon and Bullock. We get, which is the exact same copy and paste panel. Mm-hmm. And then we get four panels of the dogs. And Batman's <laughs> the dogs. Walking that's, a fun, up behind that, them. that's a fun scene. Cause you think Batman kills the dogs and he does it. And it's like, the dogs are like barking, like they're freaking out. And then they go like, huh? Like it's, it's supposed to be some moment that, of levity. That is cool, but but once why? again, that's a lot of real estate 
for a what would be a cool visual aspect of a movie right and in a comic i just go okay all right all right yeah you know what i mean yeah, like yeah. but like i remember in the first issue when jason shoots the joker in the head and there's like two pages dedicated to him falling and i was like and i remember thinking no oh. like because I don't know who these jokers are because I don't know what they did. I only have like infographics made by redditors that did that like suggest which one is which and which one did what. Yeah. I don't have the narrative satisfaction of like knowing which joker this is. And especially because in this story, if we're going to divorce it from everything, this is the first time I'm finding out there's three jokers and you just killed one of them in the, in the, in the latter half of the first freaking issue. Yeah, I know. And but like but I know from the art and from the descri- the, the the breakdown of the page we're supposed to be this is their holy shit moment. Like that image of Joker getting his brain blown I was like we're never yeah. going to kill the Joker. We just killed the Joker. Like holy shit. And or a Joker in the words well, of Well obviously <laughs> well, that's the thing is that we can do that now because there's three and I'm going to replace one with one with with somebody. And for me that sequence was a little hollow because I don't know which Joker this is. I I don't, I just found out he really existed and I, you know, I don't even know if Jason's getting real justice slash revenge. And then in the second issue, we get the fly sequence. And I think the fly sequence is there really to tell you he's that, that Joker mattered and that Joker is not coming back. And it's just one of those things where it's like, I'm going to spend a whole page just really hammering home that like that Joker was important and now he's dead. We went there and I'm like, okay, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like, and it's like, this book is, is fascinating because it's a secret. There are a lot of great, uh, for me, there's a lot of triumphs, all of it artistic, uh, you know what I mean? Like, we're not, I don't know if it's even like a cohesive, coherent narrative yet, but I am, I applaud the visuals and a couple of the homages. Like, we get a lot of callbacks and stuff, but not in a like ham fisted kind of frustrating way. You know, like when, when Gordon, when, when Barbara takes Jason to her apartment, it's clearly the apartment that she lived in when she was in the killing joke and like the same arrangement of furniture. And it's like, that's really cool. Like the the allusion to the family, which looks just like the comedian's family from Killing Joke in the flashback and them being connected with Joe Chill. Like, what does that mean? That raises an interest. That's a that's a fair question as opposed to a what? Like, the, which which happens way too often in this book where it's like, what? Why did you do that? What is this? And that doesn't even get that doesn't even hold the candle to the part where. I, you know, the last page reveals or the last page moments are like supposed to be those like, whoa moments. And in this, it's kind of like the last page of this issue. I was like, oh, no, but also it could be hilarious. Not that Joe Chill is the Joker, but more like. I like the idea that the Joker. We don't see the Joker interact with Joe Chill. And yet Joe Chill is responsible for both of them because Joe Chill created Batman, Batman begat Joker. So we're seeing this connection between these two characters for the first time. And that's kind of amazing. Uh, we get we get the catalyst for Batman and his greatest nemesis in the same room. But then he, I feel like I yeah. feel like what Jeff Johns wanted to do was give us all those moments that we never get. Right. Right. Like Jason deal killing the Joker. Yes. Joker meeting Joe Chill. Uh, yep. th- that was the point of the three jokers to make something that could fit out of continuity or if it's in continuity kill off two jokers and get the moments that we always wanted with the joker because you have a disposable number of jokers right <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could kill a whole swimming pool full of them if you wanted to <laughs> exactly uh, and i feel like that was the intention of the three jokers but it just feels hollow because he's so focused on the amazing artwork and trying to let the art shine that we're not getting the story Right. We're getting mysteries and just questions. Yes. Um, I think now uh, I, I, I put this together the other day, but I was thinking, you know, it's funny that Jeff Johns actually did telegraph that Joe chill would be involved because when Batman sits on the Mobius chair in dark side war, 
he asks it two questions. The first question is, who killed my parents? And the chair says, Joe Chill. Yeah. And the immediate second question is, who is the Joker? And the Mobius chair says, there's three of them. Right. Maybe those questions are connected. Like, maybe the answers are connected, I should say. And that, like, Joe Chill was always going to be a catalyst or a, or, or a factor in this three Joker story, which is interesting. I don't like, I don't know if I like the idea of Joe Chill becoming a Joker, if that's where we're going. I, if anywhere, anything that would, that would link it up to the 1989 Batman movie, basically. Yeah. In, in its own way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Um, but... I also like the idea because I, I hate the idea of Joe Chill being like a mob enforcer or him like killing the Waynes because he was like being told to. I hate when people do that. Like I don't like in 89 where Joe Chill was Joker and it wasn't Joe Chill. It was Jack Napier. And I don't yeah. like in Batman Begins where Joe Chill, you know, was working, you know, I don't know. Well, he actually wasn't I like the for- idea that it's just a piece of random crime that just happened to happen and there's no linking factor. That that means so much to me. Like I liked actually post crisis when it wasn't Joe chill. It was just someone and Batman never solved it. But like, yeah. if it's got to be Joe chill, please make it just, it was a crime of opportunity. Joe chill was a desperate man in an alley and accidentally killed the Waynes. Like that's it because Batman needs to fight crime. Not the guy Joe chill was working for. Like when Batman kills Joker in Batman 89, that's it. He's like, I killed the guy who killed my parents. I don't have to be Batman anymore. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like if, if, if the guy who killed Batman's parents has a name, you know, it, it makes his nebulous, unending war on crime kind of have no meaning because it's like, well, really, I, I'm not declaring war on crime. I'm declaring war on the guy who killed my parents. And well, th- there he is over there. Um, he's, right, he's right on the corner. He's right over there. I know his name. I know where he lives. Like, <laughs> it's it's a little less impactful. I know, less, I know what senior center he visits. Yeah, it's, <laughs> exactly. It's a little less epic. And I don't I don't care for that. It's a little less like of a, of a myth. And more of like a like a you know like like a James Bond kind of story, but I don't know. It's cool. Like I I I appreciate where they're going with it. Hopefully, because I love I would love the idea if the opening thing of Three Jokers Three is Joe Chill being like, "Why did I kill the Waynes? Because the Mrs. Wayne was wearing pearls. Like I didn't I didn't kill them for any reason." And Joker's like, "Lol, so random." Like I like that's Lol, funny to me. So- because it's because it's true. Like that's why he'd like, yeah, you had no idea. Like you didn't do it on purpose. Like you have no idea. You just you just thought, hey, a couple of wealthy people in an alley, and you created Batman. You idiot. Like yeah, that's that's a pretty cool joke, and it might be the reason why Jokers are thinking, ah, Joe Chill should be Joker, if they're thinking that. But again, I don't know if that factors fa- factors into their overall scheme because, of course, they make a point of saying. Jason Todd can't be Joker because he's not bright enough. And it's like, well, neither is Joe Chill. He's not exactly a, you know, a, yeah, a military strategy. With that. <laughs> so, so we'll see. Right, I don't know. Let's, let's move the topic on because now I think we're kind of re You're right. Yeah. No, we're, we're in Without the now. third issue, like we could have a whole episode of this once the third issue's out. And then we're, we're like, okay, it all came together, Sal. What a brilliant piece of art. <laughs> I, I, I always want that. That's where I want it yeah. to go. Do I expect that? Mm, 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 probably not. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh next up is x of swords now i jokingly said i didn't like it i actually haven't read it yet i'm still catching up on <laughs> really? all the x-men i have a lot of x to catch up on and i just spent two weeks beating red dead redemption <laughs> excuse me <laughs> so yeah well so, so you didn't how read is it next swords? how is that i'm asking you, you, oh, you it's, read it's, it? it's cool i mean like it's cool it's pretty penetrable like if you if you, if you want to like if you get all the continuity, it sounds confusing. But like, let me see if I can sum it up pretty simply. Okay. Um. Okay. So there's a realm full of monsters that are ruled by Apocalypse's original horsemen. Right. Okay. In order to get to Earth slash Krakoa, they gotta go through Otherworld which is that magic realm of Avalon where like Saturnine lives and the Captain Britain Corps. Okay. In order to get to, so in order to get to earth, they got to go through other world. They were on their way through other world when they bumped into apocalypse and a couple of X-Men and Saturnine, who is a character I'm not going to get into 
who is super powerful, stopped both armies and said, if you want to go to Krakoa and take over everything, you have to beat these, you have to beat the X-Men in a, like, in an arena through combat using swords. Oh, that's a pretty cool idea. So, yeah. So the horsemen. Okay, I'm going to jump to that. I'll stop reading. Uh, I mean, I, I'm at the end of X-Force. I was going to go to Wolverine. Oh, yeah. No, it has nothing to do with that. You don't need to read Wolverine. I mean, like, you can read Wolverine yeah, anytime. I like Wolverine. But I like Wolverine. I know. Yeah. Well, I think you're going to like Wolverine, but like, it has nothing to do with this. <laughs> so basically, finish X Force, go into X of Swords, some kind. I would. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the you know, there's some questions like, okay, so Apocalypse created the portal to get to Otherworld in the first place, and he did it by killing most of the externals and using their like bones to create the portal. That's why they call it the external gate because it's made of the bones of externals. Um, so an, an apocalypse wants to open up that portal because it turns out apocalypse had an original set of horsemen and a wife. And in order to stop the onslaught of monsters that are coming in now, he sacrificed his horsemen and wife to close the gate and keep them from coming through. But now we found out, Oh, actually they're alive and they're ruling the monsters and they want to kick my ass. <laughs> so it's just you know yeah i mean i the the biggest okay so going as much as the x-men as i've read up to this point now which is fallen angels x-men x-force yep. uh in sporadic things that tie into yeah, it, hellions you know I mean? new mutants um i i don't know what i think so far yeah it's not not terrible it is a lot better than the x-men have been in the recent years see that's what i think too like, yeah because <laughs> it's going but somewhere I, and it matters but at the same time, I, I almost feel like Hickman is trying to get fired. Like some of the ideas and things that he's doing mm -hmm. don't make any sense. Well, it only it doesn't make any sense now. He was doing he did the same thing with with uh, if you read Infinity in a vacuum, it's like what the hell's even happening? Like, yeah, well, that's very true, right? Who? I, like, I will say this though. I will say this. The one thing that I really do like about the X-Men and what I'm enjoying about it, okay? Yeah. Now, and, and this is the anti-X-Men guy. What Do you remember what my number one complaint about X-Men stories was, Sal? It was too convoluted? No, that was okay. never the problem. And I have no idea. No, I don't remember. The problem was that the X-Men storyline always loops in on itself. It always is the US or whatever. The, the humans don't like us. They're yep. trying to get rid of us. It's about racism. It's about uh, being segregated. Yep. It's about all this stuff. And then we fix it. Everyone loves us. New arc. They hate us. Yes. It was the most egregious of the comic book loop. Yes. Where it was constantly the same story. Yes. This isn't at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it's, but it still uses it because they created their own island and humanity's like, um, and they're like, yeah, we have Magneto and Apocalypse. We don't have to well, listen and, to you anymore. And that's what I think I do like about it is for the first time in 10 years or so of X-Men storylines, my number one complaint is finally out the window and I don't know what's going to happen. Right. In good, bad, convoluted or not, that is what I think I'm excited about. Yes. Like there's books I don't give a shit about. There's characters I don't give a shit about. Totally. But you know what? For the first time ever, I can't go. Oh, look, the Avengers are working with the X Men until they're not. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Like, I mean, I could probably guess what's going to happen, but maybe not. And oh, they also established. There's another thing they established in the most recent issue, which is if you know, like, you can't die anymore because they're backing up your consciousness, and they have gold balls make eggs of you and stuff. Right. Um. If you die in other world, you die for real. Okay. They can't back okay. you up. And if you die in other world, it's not that you die. You die. And if we try to resurrect you, you become another alternate reality version of yourself. You don't get to be you anymore. It's like another like fragmented alternate reality version of you. So we can revive people who die in space. Yes, but not through the. <laughs> but not in other world. If they're in other, because other world's magic. Okay. And and it's a place where like you know the Captain Britain core existed, and so it's like it's a it's a multiversal thing. So it's like it, it draws multiversal energy or something. Who knows? But the point is, the point is, 
we're going to see some characters. It's creating tension and stakes for the story. So it's like, because it's like, if the X-Men go fight these cool new bad guys, they're going to be like, bring it on. I can't die. But like, since they, <laughs> since they can, there's actual stakes. And right, well, I mean, that's the only problem with them initially going, well, no one can die. Right. Okay. Well, there's no stakes anymore. Yeah. Like, well, <laughs> now there are. And I think we're also going to get a couple people are going to die and they're going to resurrect them as like alternate versions of themselves. Like, I think we're probably going to get like an age of apocalypse version of one of these characters. I think we're going to get like, you know, you know what I mean? Like we're going to get some like new version of storm or Wolverine. Right. Right. Uh, All right. So that and like that's interesting. And the fact is, there's always the reset button because Moira is always the reset button. If she dies, we start right back from zero, and it all ha- and it all goes away. And it's like, okay, you just, you just gave it. You just discuss this. I just got the title for. I'm debating how to make a video that about the X Men. I'm gonna name it the X Men isn't shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> nice, because it, it, well, it's 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 certainly it's focused. And the and the fact is, it's 22 parts but three parts come out tomorrow and then like two more parts. You know what I mean? Like it, it's not, yeah, it's not well, going to take a I year. agree is, is a problem. There's yeah. too many parts. Like, I don't know why it's this long. No, I agree. Uh, I, well, I think it's, I think that the only reason why it's this long is because it just is. So it's, so it can justify the amount of titles that are out right now. But also if you recall, I think infinity was also 22 parts. Like anyone who's like, if you were like, I don't, freaking get it and it's like he's he's wasting all this time and money and space and stuff it's like he did the same thing with the avengers and you weren't complaining you know he's, then. He's, he's wasting real estate sal right <laughs> right because and i mean like on one hand i i totally get that complaint because there are people who are like if marvel publishes like way too many books then people are going to be choosing those books over the possibility of testing out a new book from an independent publisher. And there's yes. a, that's a, there's there's a complete argument you can make for that. But like, like I said, the point being Hickman's just doing what he did with the Avengers. And if you liked secret wars and time runs out and infinity, you know, you, you, you might want to give this a shot because it's not going to be worse than that. It's just going to be more X-Men focused. Um, right. Yeah. So, and, and, and I have it on good authority that when Hickman's all wrapped up, it's going to a new better place. So I think you're going to dig it. Uh, last big thing we have, uh, well, two of them, uh, Valiant is bringing back Harbinger. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, I, I mean, I'm excited about it. Um, Valiant has been at a weird place. They were doing great. They had the internal issues and then they've never really gotten their feet like planted again since then. Mm-hmm. And COVID did not help. COVID like, hurt everyone, especially anyone who wasn't Marvel and DC and Marvel and DC were hurt real bad. So Yeah. So I'm happy they're still around. Harbinger is probably one of my favorite elements of Valiant. It was always them, Exo Man of War. I mean, I was like four or five of the books, but yeah. I'm both safe. So. Yeah, yeah. And I like uh, I like Rodriguez's art. I will definitely check that out. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we have the new to Marvel Talent Dist- Distinction Program. I'm actually excited about this. Yes. As an ex-art major, fun fact for you guys, before I joined the military, I was an art major. <laughs> <laughs> I really was. I had. Uh, I, I just. I couldn't afford the school. I was going. For those who don't know, I was going to RISD, the Rhode Island School of Design, and they're stupid That's expensive. Awesome. No, but they're stupid expensive. Yes, they are. <laughs> I couldn't afford it. <laughs> I was in that weird place where my parents made too much money to actually get like proper financial assistance, uh-huh. but not enough money where they could actually pay for school. Yes. Like, <laughs> like on paper, you make too much money. In actuality, you're living paycheck to paycheck. Uh huh. <laughs> I know that I know that uh, paradox. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm excited. I looked into a few of these artists, and uh, overall, just it looks like it'll be a fun way to get some new art out there, get some new directions. As much as I like Jorge Jimenez's, uh, I can't say his name ever. You but, said uh, it. <laughs> I love his. Well, I love his art. I would like to see some new artists coming cycling Same. through stuff like that. I like Dexter Soy, but I'd love to see new art cycling it. You know what I mean? I'll Agreed. always buy their books or five or Fabix books or yeah. Gary Frank books. But I wouldn't like to see new artwork floating through. That's totally. All. Yeah. Well, that's it. The, there's nothing more exciting than finding out about a new artist who is like really like who's who's so desperate and hungry to tell new stories and showcase their talent and to have it be like exciting, like you're seeing a character for the first time again. Like, and that's right. there's something really delightful about that. So, 
Uh, and that wraps up all of our topics for the day. Unless you want to talk about the war zone upgrade for Poison Ivy that I didn't read. Uh, it's I think just that, that I think like, we're kind of the rumor is that like they want to make like Poison Ivy is becoming too profitable for them to make her a villain, so they're going to try and make her an antihero. Well, okay, you watched all of the Harley Quinn show, right? I sure did. Uh, I feel like Poison Ivy is getting the Harley Quinn treatment. Yes. Uh, by the way, here's, I, my, here's my problem yeah. with that, though. Here's my problem. They're turning it into Marvel. Yeah. What I love about DC's villain roster is they all stay villains, but now they're doing what Marvel does where they're like, wait, 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 wait. You guys kind of like Poison Ivy? What if Poison Ivy was a good guy? You know, like, <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, they did the same thing with Harley. Harley was the big one. Yeah. Right? Harley killed children in one of her books. And they were like, ah, she's one of the pillars of DC. The pillars? <laughs> um, but, I mean, Poison Ivy's gotten huge on the Harley Quinn show. And rightfully so, by the way. I think she, like, her voice actor, I'm like, just play her in the movie. Like, you're great. Oh, yes. Have you seen the voice actress? The voice yes. actress looks like... They like modeled the character after her. I know. She's like a real actor. Like she would be able to do it. It'd be really cool. Um, yeah. So I'd be fine with that, especially if it was that attitude. I really like that really like sassy East Coast character. <laughs> like I just want that character. What to keep I love going. about her Poison Ivy in there is like she's clearly still a villain. Right. But she just doesn't care. Yeah. Like that's the, <laughs> that's the whole thing. Yeah. Like that. But like and that was apparent in the show. Why do it in the comics? Like what? Why? Why wreck it? Like no, no, no. She's a villain. And it's like, is I mean, she big really? Big Dude in our chat makes a very good point. They've made Poison Ivy an anti-hero pretty much as long as Harley Quinn. Oh. Because they've constantly lumped her with Harley Quinn. Batman and, Har- and, and, and Ivy were a couple once. Like, like they were? Yeah. It was old, but like, yeah. That's a thing. More recently than you'd think. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, it's it's not really. It's it, the... Queen Ivy I'm, is clickbait. It's nothing. Oh yeah, no, one hundred percent. But I'm I'm just waiting for Kite Man issue number one to come out. <laughs> oh, Tom King would love to write that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's get and wrap up today's episode. Today has been Absolute Comics, the show where Sal and I sit down and chat about the latest news in the comic book world every Tuesday at about five p.m. Eastern. Provided there's actually news, I put the caveat because sometimes, especially in the state of the world right now, nothing been mentioned guys that's why we canceled the show it has nothing to do Ooh. we always every time we've canceled sal and i call each other and go any news no okay so if nothing gets announced tomorrow we're just gonna cancel like you yep. always go if nothing gets announced <laughs> i we could also have talked about the fact that like dc literally moved their entire movie slate another year oh yeah they just bumped it all back one full year and i'm like i get it because yeah <laughs> Well, no, okay, that makes actually total sense to me. Yeah. Because, like, all the movie theaters are closing back down again. And right. I'm like, what were you... That, that's literally that you bought the cart before the horse. Yep, yep. Like, no movie... Like, movies aren't being produced. No. Like, even, even the ones that were already coming out, we're running out of. It's like Wonder Woman, Tenet, Free Guy, things like that. Yeah. And none of those are coming out. Yeah, and, and, and no- Mulan didn't make enough for them to go, okay, well, it's worth doing that. Like, so... <laughs> Like I don't understand why movie theater. Like I get, uh, I get on one hand, like we need to make profit. We're a prop. We're a, a company business. that needs profit. But on the other hand, like you're a movie theater and they aren't making movies. Why did you think this would work? Yeah. Like me and Natalie, we've gone to restaurants. We've gone out. We've abided by the COVID rules. Same. Right. Yep. And I, I, we talked about going to the theater, but the reason we decided not to go is because. There's no movie, right? Like, <laughs> it's funny. Tif- watch it. Yeah, we had the same. We, Tiffany and I didn't have a conversation. We just literally were. We like there was a trailer for a movie, and we just looked at each other. And we're like, we're not going to movie theaters, right? Yeah, no. And like, so on. no, the one like, right next to me. Let me see. I think it's open. Yep, open. And they are currently playing. Here's the show times. Hocus Pocus. <sighs> I would the love, 1990s. I would love to see Hocus Pocus in the theater again. Are you kidding me? But I'm not going to your theater and sitting in a big box, breathing recirculated air around people who don't regard my life. Pass. They have Ava. I don't know what Ava is. I don't know what that is. Save yourselves. I don't know what that is. Hocus Pocus, the 40-year-old version. (laughs) I don't know what that is. You don't know what the 40-year-old version is? No, version. Not virgin. Yeah, exactly. I have no idea what that is. (laughs) 
Um, the Empire Strikes Back. I heard that too. I would love to see Empire in the theater. Are you kidding me? Come on. Uh, a movie called Shortcut, The Last Shift, Chicago 7, Break the Silence, Infidel, Hotel Transylvania is playing again. Oh. <laughs> but that, I mean, out of these movies, Empire in the theater. Yeah. That would be worth seeing for me. But not enough to risk what's going on in the world. Same. I, 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 I like, don't know what the other movies are. Yeah, no. <laughs> no. I would. I, I wanted to go see Bill and Ted 3 at the drive-in. But yeah. I, I didn't. I tried to go see New Mutants. But it was at the drive-in, and they only played it past 9 p.m., and I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, I heard it sucked, so I didn't go. <laughs> that's literally but it. Like, I was like, that, we should go. Like, everyone's freaking out. Though. Just shut down movies. Yeah, there's no movies. Yeah. And, and like, like, do you not understand how the movie business works? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, and I, I sympathize. Like, listen, it's a rock and a hard place. It sucks. You know, if yeah. you're a business that, ca- like, it's unprecedented. And that's kind of the point. Like, we didn't see this coming, and we were grossly unprepared, and some of these businesses hinge entirely on lots of people being in one place. Yeah. That yeah. sucks, and I get it. But you know what's funny about that? I was literally thinking about this today. If if COVID hit YouTube and Twitch, like, really hard for some reason... Like if, if it affected us in a big bad way, which it kind of did, but like not to that, not to the degree that it did for restaurants and movie theaters, no one would have any sympathy for us. True. Yeah. They'd be like, well, I mean, oh, you know, you got a real guys, job. You're gig, your gig of, yeah, you got to get a real job. Sucks to be you guys. Right. Oh. And like, Dude, and I, I tweeted t- out the other, I tweeted out last week, right? I tweeted out last week that I'm at the end of my vacation and I don't really feel like coming back to work this week. Um, I might just take one more day off and someone responded with, Oh, boo hoo. You, <laughs> you have to, t- you have to get to work today and, and, and sit in your office at home yep. while the rest of us go to regular work. And I just responded with, I feel like you need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I think I do too. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I feel like you need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, like you're attacking me because I said, I don't want to go back to work after my vacation ended. Like, yeah. <laughs> you right? got to go That's- sell. That's amazing. What was that? I, 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 it sounded like someone was breaking into my studio. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Hello, uh, a fan." I'm on the show. <laughs> Security. <laughs> it's Tiffany off panel with a gun right now. <laughs> right now, I we I have a, I have a spinner rack. I I need to get rid of. It came from a Borders. It was a comic book spinner rack, and I'm like, I don't want to carry this thing. I I don't want to I don't want to throw it away, but I don't want to like invite people to the studio to take it. You know what I mean? I feel bad. Yeah, it's just so. It's just sitting yeah. here. I'm like, damn it, get out of my life. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let's actually wrap up today's yeah. show. Um, I'm actually on all. Uh, as much as I'm sad that these movies are getting pushed back again, I'm on board of it because I'd rather them come out and do well. Absolutely. Because if they don't do well, guys, they're going to stop making these movies, or they're going to wait until they know it's safe. Yeah. So I'd rather them wait and when they do well, I'm fine with. That. Yeah, I think we're going to be in that future where like. AT&T and Disney are going to buy like AMC and Regal and then it's just going to be like a like a you know see the latest Disney flick at the Disney theater it'll be like the yeah. Disney store dude I would be okay look I know you're making jokes but imagine a Disney theater that just shows <laughs> Disney products yeah, it'd be like a game it's combined, <laughs> it's combined with a Disney store and you can get Mickey Mouse ice cream pops right <laughs> yeah prepare to spend thirty dollars a ticket for the disney theater experience that's I'm like on board with that though you're sitting there cracking jokes and i'm like a disney theater is an amazing idea yeah but <laughs> where am i gonna see james bond where am i gonna see an independent movie then like fucking half the time disney owns those th- those companies anyway they don't own those <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you get the Disney theater. Uh, it will have the superhero wing, which yeah. is all MCU related. Uh-huh. They're also, also, you know, because it's the Disney theater, you could also watch Disney Plus on the big screen. Sal, <laughs> oh my watch god, all of Falcon and Winter Soldier. <laughs> oh my god, come I, on, I, we are there. We're so close. You know, because like I think AMC <laughs> filed for bankruptcy. Disney's like, if we weren't totally effed, we'd buy you in a heartbeat. That's what we oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> 
Dean Chats even agreeing with me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. Remember that time we saw a movie in Disney where we went to Disneyland and we saw a movie in the park and we were like, this is amazing. Yeah. I think we saw Justice League. We saw Batman v <laughs> Superman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was Batman v Superman. And I remember going with one of the guys from Valiant and he just started laughing at the intro. <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. It was when Bruce was being was being elevated into the sky by bats. Yeah. Uh, Sal, you and I need to take a hell of a trip once things reopen. I have like a, okay? I, I need to, I've been mentally creating a list of all the cons slash like places i'm gonna go next year oh my god dude the cons we'll just start begging our twitch viewers to fund our travels around the state <laughs> we'll film it i promise <laughs> you know right, on that lo- on that note we should probably close up today's yeah, show so. yeah yeah that's true we don't All get right, to guys, talk much so you can see where where it kind of overflows uh we'll see <laughs> We'll see you guys next week right here at the Comic Story and Channel here on Twitch. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube or Spotify, thank you so much for your continued support. Don't forget to support Absolute Comics by visiting Comic Pop's Patreon, Comic Story's Patreon, where we uh, most times release this early, um, and sometimes bonus episodes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, either way, guys, thank you so much. We really appreciate all your support. We'll see you guys next time right here at Absolute Comics.